Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you.
in the world of family life there are others raising award-winning children there are others raising armed robbers and cowards and thieves and and nuisance to society in the world of impact there are those that the hand of god is mighty upon they are shaking lands and territories and yet there are others scrounging and scrambling for relevance what is responsible for this difference could it be that god decided to choose others could it be that god just hated others is that really it what would be responsible brothers and sisters for a man who rises up as a nobody the map of your village not being on the map and yet you rise to be a global phenomenon where people say thank god you were born thank god you did not die blessed is the womb that produced this child what makes that difference that a man will be born a pauper with rain falling and yet at the end of his life he is a generational blessing his name becomes an access key to favor that every time you say i am associated with sam they say which sam because of that access is given what is responsible for this difference in society It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know it is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts we will never win souls that way till jesus comes the key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the christ is hidden in one word influence 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 the mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the lordship of christ everybody say influence influence will do more than tracts will do influence will do more than crusades will do influence at every given point in your life your decisions your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model consciously or unconsciously and therefore the key to bring in earth, our territories, cosmos, to the obedience of Christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can, by our influence, buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology. Like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? According to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. 
it reflects the glory of the sun if you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun you look at the moon the degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it it shines hallelujah christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until jesus comes christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married christianity is an ideology the faith life is an ideology it's a movement it's a cause there is something we are doing god has an intention in his mind and he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that his emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men and that's what we call being born again the establishment of the reign and the rule of the christ in the hearts of men not just coming for altar call Called, altar call is not enough to get you born again it gets you saved but to be born anew and to be transformed the christ needs to be established in your heart the degree to which the word of god finds expression in your life the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom is the degree to which jesus has become lord of your life are we are we understanding One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first, the Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitations is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's, it's all right. I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development you ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the christ you will fail in life in every respect i can never change you until i change your mind i can never change you till i alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking around your perception about life there's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23, verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One, to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One, to read. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total of the ideologies that inform my decisions profound truth profound truth that a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset i've done many teachings about mindsets and i will not stop until a transition happens the key to persuasion is repetition not information repetition when a truth is repeated it, it becomes a priority to you 
And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty men in this place. And he won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bonke. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. When you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries. You will find a reason to say Lord I thank you. The training process is always difficult. Because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it. Because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting faults is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears. But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens number one a father and a son platform a transfer from a father to a son number two a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice number three a transfer from a teacher to a student you cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague no sir it's against the law of impartation that means every time you want to receive one must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say, I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching and immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? Society will teach you otherwise. That's why there are lots of failures outside. Let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you listen to what I am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings, you will never, never be a disappointment to the kingdom. I give you that as a guarantee. But the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of God? To what degree 
every time we come to God many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us sometimes he doesn't need to add he needs to take from you because what you currently have is what is destroying you there is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life there is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit there is an ideology that is limiting your financial life there is an ideology that is limiting your ministry limiting every aspect of your life and when you contend for light and you receive that light no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down not for too long hallelujah as a man thinketh in his heart so is he as i walk around as i travel around i've had the privilege of traveling to different territories i study culture a lot in fact whenever we travel for administration if time allows us we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people i like to study how people think i like to study what their priorities are i like to study what what constitutes a taboo for them what is the scope of their ideology and i am amazed i see the reason why africa is where it is i see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever ever touch the true grace of god in their lives i see the reason why though many go to school and graduate they end up failures failures from the perspective of the kingdom failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom i see why zealous people will start out well and end as if god left them there is something that we consistently violate and that is the power of transformation the power of transformation the power of transformation i can't tell you this enough koinonia listen to me the power of transformation you can rise from where you are i don't care what the limitations are stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into and concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up otherwise you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you that's what has happened we have a generation of irresponsible people spiritually irresponsible mentally irresponsible physically irresponsible there has been a transgenerational game of blaming people one generation blaming another for their failures one generation blaming another nigerians blame government africans blame their parents they blame institutions our refusal to turn and say what can i do to live where i am gideon was a little boy who was hiding he had of the miracles that happened and now he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says oh thou mighty man of value can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation let me tell you something my message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement if you have that kind of mindset here your first assignment tonight is repent can we have the windows open i think the rain is hallelujah everyone say in the name of jesus i take full responsibility for my current position spiritually financially socially i take full responsibility and i am willing to pay the price to change that pattern say one more time in the name of jesus i refuse resentment i refuse blaming people i make up my mind that from today i take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life that's right that's the, the decision that begins to change your life you say this among your colleagues and they will insult you 
Some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God. That foolish man was a herbalist. But what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light? There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers, there are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. My challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility. Please pray in one minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Pray, pray, open your mouth. Don't just pray in your heart. Willingly and consciously before heaven, this day, this day, this day, the 22nd of May, I make up my mind that from today, I begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. 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 I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. I'm a lady, that's why. They should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed, that's why. I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and he didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, your ideologies, determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success.
The Bible keeps telling us again and again. Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter I believe 4 4 verse 23 Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family. You can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change. Or you can stand where you are and watch life weep you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell. Is that serious? Keep your heart. It is your responsibility. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it, out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor James. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God will use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. There is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise. Let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having. In it, I teach on the power of decisions. Do you know the difference between a decision and a wish? This is it. I want to drink water is a decision. That's the water there. I want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire. I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water. Are you seeing that now? A decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result. Many people wish for the anointing. Oh, I wish, I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christian and things, they think we are idiots. Because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say, I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again very quickly. Remember I told you that there is a law the law of manifestation. And that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset. The inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies. By and large, your mentality about prosperity will show physically. 
by and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak otherwise. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Key, or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right? Of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the mega is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the mega convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months transfer them meaning tell the may god we hereby give you this office is yours for two months and tell the ogre go to the gate the ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office they will start waiting at the gate there is a mentality are you getting my point he's going to look and say is there something we can do is there something we can do right there at the gate he will start consultancy services. Right there at the gate, he will think and say, how can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? Whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and a, the keys, bunch of keys to a gate. Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul, find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating. And quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it. And he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. If I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur, 
and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen. And they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself not knowing why he's successful. He thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you resents people from you. And if you do not take the time to study it and change and say, I'm like that. My mother never had any friend, only me. You see it, the transference. Let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people. Right? Number one, is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. What is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage that there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard a status quo are you getting my point it's a terrible mindset a terrible mental state of being because it produces dangerous fruits and we're about to see a few of them let me tell you, the foolishness of many people in society, from preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders, is motivated by this poisonous mindset, subtle but dangerous. Low self-esteem. What does low self-esteem do? Low self-esteem, when it is matured in a man, becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance so all that fight for titles all that fight for recognition all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem are we blessed so a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair she can be beautiful and guys will not see her wherever she got that ideology and then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000 and that becomes a goal she's under pressure borrowing money trying to prove all kinds of things and then when she buys it and puts it she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo it's God speaking to us. So we have preachers with their clubs and societies. Right? That is based on something they believe they have to do to match up. So a man of God thinks I can teach but I can't prophesy. And his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow. Are you getting my point? Even to the point of witchcraft. And when he gets it, he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me, I will be like so, so, so man of God. Are you seeing that now? A poisonous mindset. This is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. A father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director. And his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down. Are we blessed now? Low self-esteem. A mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. 
Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially in young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months have a record-breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem. To prove. And you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us? Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing and some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an on one big ungodly military officer you know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say i am going out with somebody in judge right and that oh you think i don't know you are joking <laughs> is god speaking to us there are many preachers they start preaching now and they say kai if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now. And they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy. Or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem being a motivation for many things that's why you see preachers come please look at men of god for instance when another man of god is about to see one everybody's standing to see who will greet who as a proof right meaning that the one who greets one is accepted you see we carry our villages we carry our pain we carry our backgrounds mix it with the anointing mix it with ministry and off we go misleading many people So he comes to me and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet their people and just say, God bless you. How are you? No. Because if how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you, give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband 10 times and you drove him 10 times. Because something in your mind, you live around the mediocre just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you. And they say, Kai guy, you represented us. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change. Or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. You, you find that? All of those things. Some of us are sitting right now. Aside from maybe you just beg somebody. The clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in. That mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. 
And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half caste. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here. Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus. I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a Jeep. Say, Mary, bought a Jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out find out what and you see when you are determined to find out things you will always find something is that true low self esteem number two is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words uncultured use of words Psalms 141 verse 3, an uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. It said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny, that which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life, is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. Ah, do you know, see that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one, that's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning, I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth. There are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Cotonou, and it's a lie pressure to say things that should not be set a watch 
put a gate, oh God, in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren. You carried your mouth, running it around, telling people and saying, don't tell anybody. For what? Say, I don't know you, don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife, this and that and that happened. How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak and when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father has been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh God over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um, I'm, 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 we are going to get married let me just calm down I'm trusting God for some finances to come before you knew it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say I'm not doing and the friend say how far are married say, hey, God is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said, there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of 5 million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. Though. I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine? That this person did this she was so disappointed she's still been disappointed she still did this and i said shame on you one because you were was it not in a room was it outside it happened you went to the room you were also tempted you will not accept that part of your role the role you played in seducing him you are you saying you did not see the advancement coming you were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it is that not how it happens it was holding you, doing all kinds of things. You were enjoying it. When you felt it would now cross the boundary, what you call boundary, you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself. I'm not justifying immorality. I'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded, uncultured communication. And the way she was talking to me, I know she has told more than hundreds of people right there. And you, you, you destroy. Now, listen. We are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. 
they say you are the I, I remember one lady who met me and said um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me I said it's a sign that you need deliverance while you are concentrating and saying people are doing this there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people rather than thinking you are so seductive you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it are you getting what I'm saying now unguarded communication unguarded communications matters that don't concern you it's amazing you hear people talking about their father talking about their mother talking about their sister a lady met me and said ah that uh, her sister just got married though sharp sharp she's now pregnant i say shut your mouth you are you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication look at what drives your mind Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to live to, people say, may God forbid. i rather die than to give this person a job. This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian, no. Uh, I won't hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower and blind f buying flower and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13? You are just coming innocently. You don't know. You you think she's a nice lady. And the guy say, eh. Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but who knows? If there's something, go for a test. Mount. Some of us listen. Mindset, listen to me. It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, the Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news. The Creflo Dollar asked his congregation, to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry. There are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Called their fathers witches. Listen. Give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth. And say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this. Stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering unguarded use of your mouth you just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes are we growing tonight some of these issues look little but this is what makes leaders out of people notice that leaders are calm people there are people who evaluate things there are people who look into things because one day somebody is going to say something about your life your ministry your business something is that true i remember when one woman i think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia we emphasize the holy spirit not jesus he said that's witchcraft that's signs of the end time and the person was hoping that i would respond to it and i just kept quiet i said glory be to jesus and that was the end of it because sometimes I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. 
somebody comes to gossip to you and immediately he finishes the gossiping about tosin you tell the person let's hold hands and pray for her and the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do tomorrow they mark you as a real christian do you know why many preachers messages are not strong on the pulpit they know you outside of pulpit they know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry weight. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why? What is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him everybody will come and say we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tight of his billion there are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous don't think everybody is struggling there are people seated quietly here i know them There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Grace of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office. Yet they are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was giving caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me, in my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life. And the most sincere woman. That my neighbor's friend. I've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges. She shared her testimony here. And that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry. She will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her. I, there was a time she came, there was nobody. You know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. Hi. I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this?
how many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless will you make up your mind that beginning from today i will set a guard over my mouth my mouth will not be the reason why i would destroy the life of another anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings in israel if you cause somebody they will kill you because they understand the implication of words is god speaking to us tonight many of us have made ourselves cheap when you started out people respected you because you were a man of few words right now you have become a talkative and gradually you see that your respect has been going down have you seen people like that one moment they are rest in fact when they come they say sir good afternoon at the end of the conversation the woman say okay my son i've heard about you whereas when you came she said kind man of god i i covet the grace upon your life but you threw away your honor everybody write this word down honor honor these are the principles that bring honor to your life value honor more than money value honor more than reputation money cannot give you honor but honor will give you blessings honor the ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor uncommon principles that will make you exceptional Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man thinketh, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints. And connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which make kings. That which make nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind? When I find out that there is something flawed in my life. How do I start? Now I've found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I've found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I've found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I've found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I've found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that then there is a need for transformation in that area of your life transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept there are some of us here god has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings but something about our mindset keep throwing money out of our lives favor brings money to your life wisdom throws it out of your life there are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset you go to preach in a church you don't study the way the church setting is you just stand and run your mouth and say anything anyhow to anybody you go to a church that is predominantly elders your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience you go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I paid the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. Because you did not know how to communicate her right. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our ogre was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself. But this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing. But these mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life. And the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person. You just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so this and that and that there was a young man that was standing well while i returned from the trip i was i just ran to quickly refresh and come and the young man just stood there 
And I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinonia. I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of... No, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there and bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, this person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional many of us are anointed no doubt but many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion the wisdom that makes men exceptional the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives that mental adjustment one more time lay your hands on your head and say lord jesus I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, Two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect. Another word you can put is respect. The mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this. And then I come up as a man of God and I just collect the mic from him. And I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? Never you sub your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take hello. What are you even saying again? Take. 
And whereas this guy has been looking from afar, oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And he turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life. And I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens, when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Don't say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodun, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow. Because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, Ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you. Because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least. The people are joining a line. That is already embarrassing for me. Because I know some of the people standing in that line. It's not like there are some helpless people. But they humble themselves and they stand. And... To be able to do that, I give them a hug. I talk to them with courtesy. All our little children that come to hug me here, I honor them. That's why immediately after service, they come around. You, the little children sit near you. As they are sharing the grace, they are running away from you. Something about your life is driving them. That's how a business partner will look at you. And say, you don't have the skill for business, but there is an attitude. There's something about you. I want to do business with you. There is a business of hundreds of millions that I want to do with you. And you step into favor. Favor that you will never recover from. There are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today. That I know should never have been opened. But because I honored my way to them. I treated people with courtesy. And I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed. It's God speaking to us. The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. 
Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding. You will endure misinterpretation. You will endure a lot. You will make sacrifices. You will endure hunger. But he that endures, let me tell you, when you see a blessed man, respect him. Don't ever see any man, either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done. Never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand. Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now, you cannot respond to us? Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> he went to collect power for the next level. Listen, listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws. And do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me. Me. God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice. Endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. The favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. Endurance. Endurance. Endure hardship as a faithful soldier of Christ. You went to win souls, nothing happened. 
you went for that meeting you thought the power of God would move nothing happened and you seem to live in shame don't worry keep fasting keep praying I know you went and it looked like they dread you you went to sing and you lost your key you lost your voice you embarrassed don't worry let them keep laughing don't be under pressure to prove anything and say no is i can sing oh what happened that day is i had kata forget about all those explanations kata or no kata continue a day will come you will be noted for persistence and your critics will become the advocates of your lifting when you endure if you give up you make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone. We are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution. But endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary. And now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions. The transformation of lives seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure i know you have been taught that if it is of god it must come cheap and easy no sir there is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown this is a very deep teaching you must endure we are going to pray oh i will endure no matter what it will take I will endure. As you are sitting down right now, there may not be one naira in your pocket, but endure. Keep tithing. Some of you, aside from boss, you may trek home. Endure. Some of you, you go and receive. As old as you are, you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones. Endure. And you see the hand of God upon your life. Endure. Who is God speaking to? Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. Endure endure you don't have suit to wear don't be under pressure to do anything endure is god speaking to us i choose to endure this is how this ministry came to see what god is doing today and to see where he brought us and to see where he's taking us endurance endure the mockery endure the shame never be under pressure to prove yourself at every given point in your life, those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you, you throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Rise up on your feet. As a man thinketh, your mental composition endure. You are in that department, it looks like you will die. It will not kill you. You are not the first to graduate from there. Endure hardship. Endure the mockery. You will be misunderstood. You are being nice to brothers. Sometimes you cook for them. They've called you desperate. Endure. Don't worry. A day will come. His honor will come upon your life. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the word tonight. Pray.
the mental composition that makes you victorious the mental composition I give you a guarantee with the integrity of God backed up it will make you exceptional it will make you notable are you praying koinonia hallelujah i like you to lift up your voice and say lord i bring my mindset under the lordship of christ that every mentality in me that is making me think in a way that is inconsistent with the patterns of greatness I take authority over it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, are you praying tonight? I pull down strongholds. I cast down imaginations. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is the key to your prosperity. Your mindset is the key to the increase in the anointing is the key to the holy spirit doing mighty things in your life the key to you being a champion the key to you breaking cultural barriers the key to you being mighty i don't care where you are now i don't care what is wrong now endure be strong be strong hold on be strong hallelujah Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 the name of the mindset I want you to have is called the mind of Christ the resultant effect of this transformation is called the mind of Christ then you become an envoy then you master life then you become a champion men honor you as if you charm them everywhere you go you are a magnet and people are saying what i'm giving you the mental requirements of an exceptional life please give us philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Mm. oh lord i pray that your people will listen permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus the word let there is permit allow it god is saying change i want to make you mighty you came from kogi state i know there is witchcraft but can you adjust your mind and see a champion that i will make out of you i know you are weak the whole family stays in one room but can you make that shift in your mind let this mind be in you let this mind be in you koinonia let this mind be in you upgrade your mindset don't let culture cheat you don't let your past cheat you if god shows you something about a family that requires some kind of financial capability to solve their needs if you do not have the financial wherewithal you can only intercede so God will not waste his time bringing you that kind of dream. He will find someone who has opened himself to that possibility in the kingdom and grant him access to that revelation. Because in seeing it, he also has the ability to do something about it. Are we together? It will no longer be that the church will buy a plot of land or plots of land and then the government will arise and seize it simply because everyone is in the church is spiritual anointed but with no voice jesus remained on the cross no influence could bring him down but a man called joseph of arimathea the bible called him a noble man he had both the political and financial power he went to caesar and demanded that jesus be brought down where would you keep him caesar said and he said no i have a virgin tomb and they took jesus and buried him there influence played a role in the salvation of our souls are we together now
it matters that we rise to positions of kingdom influence thou shall increase give us that scripture please thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about why for the sake of your kingdom why for the sake of your glory for the sake of the advancement of your purposes thou shall increase my finances and comfort me round about thou shall increase the anointing upon my life and comfort me round about thou shall increase my sphere of influence thou shall increase my strategic alliances thou shall increase my voice thou shall increase the capacity my mind everything that needs to be increased should be increased in this season are we blessed and comfort me roundabout there are people here you are here seated many of the prayer requests that you are going to be submitting requires influence for it to be answered it doesn't just require God a man can answer that prayer are we together influence all you need is for someone to talk to someone to advocate for someone on your behalf and that whole prayer point that is giving you headache is solved in a moment it's amazing how influence can represent Christ in a moment in a twinkling of an eye a challenge that has held a family a nation a territory just within a moment greatness is powerful you will never be able to legislate on behalf of the kingdom if you do not contend for certain dimensions of greatness and influence hallelujah this is a very powerful scripture that should be your prayer request in this season there are pastors who are anointed they love god they have revelation but they have rejected kingdom influence and it has pegged them down peg their ministries peg everything about them let me tell you something about followership nobody wants to follow a man who is not growing nobody wants to follow a man who is not rising are we together now yes for as long as we continue to celebrate mediocrity for as long as we continue to allow ourselves to be um the bible says they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise for as long as we remain at the lowest levels in life let me tell you this we may keep feeling spiritual but there is very little god will be able to do with us it's true when you increase in greatness you give god space to find expression in and through you in this season god is passionately finding men who will embody influence with a heart for him so that he will be able to win people winning people one by one will not get the job done we need to win territories through influence are we together now yes islam is one of the fastest growing religion in europe and you will never see any city-wide crusade you will never see any venue being rented for any conference they are using one key everybody say influence because when a man is hungry you don't give him a bible when a man is hungry you put the gospel on a plate of a loaf of bread and give it to him that's the only way he can eat that he can receive it are we together you've heard me say it again and again by the grace of god i will never pastor a people who are spiritual but not influential both can go hand in hand now every time you are doing things that are new or out of the box you will be misunderstood because society is full of status quo and most of those those systems are largely founded upon mediocrity the average believer does not understand how the kingdom should be advanced they know how you should grow they know how you should rise they know how your spirit man should be strong but they don't know how the purposes of god should be institutionalized within a territory the subject of kingdom advance is seldom understood by many people very few people i tell you this with 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 no sense of of um criticism or whatever but even among us men of god there are very few people who understand kingdom advance we understand spiritual growth we understand the issues that 
concern our growth and character and so on and so forth but the issues that have to institutionalize christ so that 30 years after now our children will still be rooted in the things of god we hardly have that understanding and living in the 21st century has shifted things we must learn how to shift we must learn how to be strategic in our approach hallelujah the message remains the same but the communication must be strategic enough to be able to represent christ are we blessed thou shall increase my greatness before i continue i just feel we should pray this prayer in one minute i don't know what area listen greatness is a summation of excellence in many facets of your life some of us may be doing well in one area may be doing well in another area find the area where you know you cannot say you are experiencing greatness in and in one minute cry to god and say lord visit me in this area go ahead pray with all your heart lord you have granted me access to revelations i thank you step in over my finances lord you have helped me in the area of my finances but my spiritual life is crushing to pieces grant me grace you have granted me access to revelations but my mind my mind is barren i need a miracle in my mind increase my capacity understanding make sure you are praying this is the miracle service many of the challenges that we have in our lives are dependent on these things whether you are standing whether you are at the window whether you are everywhere following online just go ahead and connect don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you it's a very serious prayer everyone that asked receive it lord increase my greatness increase my greatness comfort me increase my greatness for the sake of my family members increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what i've shared just one key that can help us grow in greatness greatness is a system remember that the kingdom of god operates on mysteries and systems say after me mysteries say after me systems the kingdom of god is systemic god never does the same thing twice when he does a thing once he creates a system around it for continuity are we together he never created the plants and the animals twice he did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction he made one man one woman never to make another one again are we together there is a system so if your life is to excel it must be built on systems if your life is built on miracles as much as you are going to receive them miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of god is intervening to correct we were never designed to live off miracles listen very carefully if you live off miracles you will live a frustrated life we live off principles we live off the systems of the kingdom the systems of god create predictability they are an attestation to his justice the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic are we together first corinthians chapter 4 please give us verse 1 and verse 2 let's talk about just one key here faithfulness say after me faithfulness second corinthians chapter 4 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ paul is speaking now and stewards paul uses a very interesting language not 
not owners he calls them stewards the word steward is the word caretaker caretakers of the mysteries of god number two he says moreover it is required in stewards if it is true that you are a steward there is a requirement and he says moreover it is required in stewards that a man whoever says he is a steward must exhibit a character called faithfulness faithfulness he says must be found faithful there are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence their current financial level their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality faithfulness in the kingdom you grow it looks simple but write it in the kingdom you grow and jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say it's a double portion of your anointing and i said look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that are being produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are it's a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 
he says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and kobo he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor come pastor femi i can see him already warming up to be a very can i mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with god a time can come god can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this 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 is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her 
two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say aha this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it he should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god this these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know while you are looking at this but there is a god who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of god should not rise are we together many of us want resources as i've lifted this one thousand now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can god give you this and say let me have it back and you say lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness lord after all it came from you i i you took me from nowhere soaking gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this 
the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one-on-one -on -one. it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of God who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no I'm anointed if not because of condition don't I have a better revelation than Kenny and God keeps you there say stay there I just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why God keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 i just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou has been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient I'm coming I'm not ashamed to say God is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me I will teach I will make Bible study notes and God is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the Spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou hast been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation 
I will make thee ruler over many things. Let's go to 29. 29. For unto everyone that hath, this is a mystery in the kingdom, that when you have, it's a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what? Abundance of anything. Abundance here doesn't just talk of finance. Abundance of the anointing. Abundance of influence. Abundance of access to revelations. And then it says, but from him that hath, and is not faithful now, it says, even that which he had shall be taken away. It is not only Satan that takes things away. God too takes things away. Are we together now? Not every reduction is caused by demons. There are reductions that are a testimony. It's a report card from God to you that something is wrong with your stewardship. When God increases you, members rise today and mysteriously members just go down. Sometimes it could be that it's a message from God that I trusted you with 30 people and I observed your stewardship. Your stewardship does not merit multiplication. You rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again. It could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship. You rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there. All the people whose voice, who, who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there. It could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship. Are we together? The prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe, wash it. It's a 200 naira trouser, wash it. Are we together now? We live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life. That claps for people for jumping seasons. And as soon as they clap for you, and as frequent as they clap for you, that's the same way they will clap against you. Because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the Lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what I'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if God does not open a door, your tenacity can force that door to open? That you forced a door and it opened. A man can go around with complimentary cards. I'm a man of God. 
I'm a gospel artist. In fact, you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens. You can go around and out of the 1,000 invitations you beg for, you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase. You see, when you open the door by yourself, you have to keep it open by yourself. But when God opens it, God, when he opens it, he keeps it by his own hand. The hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end. I will not be afraid. There is a hand that lifted me, will uphold me to the end. I will not be. Hallelujah. Years ago, I had a conversation. We we're about to pray with a gentleman, and he asked me a very honest question. He said, Apostle, I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people. And he asked a question. He said, Can you reproduce these results? And I said, That's not me to answer. You are asking time, not me. Keep watching. And I think two weeks ago, he sent me a text. You know, just joking. I'm, I'm just saying it. And he's just sent a text. And he said, Apostle, you are dangerous. I said, I'm not dangerous. The laws of God are dangerous. It is not me. It is the laws of God. Whoever will keep these truths, it will work for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if you are afraid of yourself, trust his laws. And watch them shock you. And make a wonder out of your life. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. In a few minutes now, we're going to begin to pray. And many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic. It is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you. There is a system in the kingdom. We make our boast first in the Lord and then in the power of his might. His might, the power of his might, the power that is released when his laws operate. Those who don't understand will look at these things and think it's boasting. It's not boasting. It's true. The predictability of God's principles. Hallelujah. I challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving, you must trust God to go back and say, Lord, teach me your ways. We reign in this kingdom. We're about to pray now. I want to show you a very dangerous scripture that God opened my eyes to. Brothers and sisters, if God does not open your eyes to see how a thing works, you may never know. Do you know that in every challenge that you have right now, a way of escape is there? But it takes God to open your eyes. Psalm 77. Turn there. Let me show you something. Psalm 77 and verse 19. Psalm 77 verse 19 Give us from Amplified if it's possible Lion of Judah My trust is in you Alpha and Omega My trust is in you I am that I am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle it said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble it says and your path through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it it says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at a water 
challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing he says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I... but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord Many of you have come from several places. You have made sacrifices. Please don't come here wasting your time. And don't come here wondering. Let's see what God will do. Already I can answer you. You won't get anything. Already. Let me, let me be honest with you. Because God is not a magician. But there are people that come here determined. And say Lord I have seen you in this place. I can't go back this way. That something must shift in my life. Something must change in my life. 
not all of you may be trusting God for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting God for one thing or the other I like you to believe there is a way in the sea I bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the Bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh, is the Lord. Oh, is the Lord. Listen. It is our confidence in God and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not even, we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know God by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries Ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard Paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet washing a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand 
that God in this season wants to shift you but you won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight I bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something God can do about your finances there's something God can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the Red Sea parts and God will rubbish Pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful Lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick. And um, now this is how we're going to do it. Because of, because of, those of you outside, don't worry. You don't worry. Wherever you are, you will be attended to. Are we together? you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service. It's not just limited to healing, but we're going to pray for the sick now. Now, we're going to do this very fast. And um, please, those that will be ministering, let's, let's do it very fast. It's not in how long... Listen, let me tell you something about the anointing. It's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency. Just a touch is enough for the anointing. The same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry 
in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we are gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sea god bless you Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. Yeah. The honor. Yes, Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. Yes, there is no one else. There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Think you deserve the glory, say you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and worship as we praise. As we praise oh, 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 yes, you deserve the glory. why we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name give you your
name, on the name, on the name. Jesus, hey, let every other name. Say, let every other name Jesus, take your place Let every other name fade away
and say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus set Every stronghold shall be broken. You were the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Papo Sabalaka to Pashabren Legadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life, upon my family, and destroy every planting that is not of God lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray Let your fire fall upon my life. Let your fire bring a separation. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What yes thou? He said four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata, under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three i release that fire now i release that fire now i release that fire now by the anointing of the holy ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah, i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like, it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh, I didn't, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is, you are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from ah, uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Where? Yeah? Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. To truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preached was for you. Yes, you heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing a new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Eleven people. Eleven people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters. Stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension i'm praying i don't know why god is moving this way there are people the call of god is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of god is upon your life but tonight as a token the spirit of god is visiting you whether you know it or not lord where are they i stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of god is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold i declare let the anointing of the spirit locate you as it locates you the lord begins to prepare you where are they receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace hallelujah there is a dangerous spirit our time is up hold on but there is a spirit that i want to rebuke now i just saw written in the air rejection hold on many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you you stand you are watching and an opportunity come rejection is not just a state it's a spirit lift your hands don't pray don't do anything just lift your hands hallelujah that's the instruction the lord is giving me just lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus many of you will be surprised now there are people it's like a yoke i'm seeing like cowries these cowries that they use that's what i'm seeing and in the name of jesus christ as the power of god is smashing that rubbish that's how many people who have been despised been despised the bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you it says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations right now i stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now I command your deliverance right now I command your deliverance right now keep your hands lifted I'm praying mighty things are happening in the spirit I asked us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart patterns I'm still seeing it again there are some of you the same thing happens to every member of your family at certain seasons everything must happen either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct you must have a child before you get married or something someone will rape you someone raped your mother someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout jesus lord i pray that as your people shout that name every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
Destiné. Alléluia. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes, that prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly please look at me salvation has come to your family the month of June look at me the month of June I'm prophesying by the spirit is the month for your family the Lord is saying I should tell you he's changing everything everything completely by the spirit of the living God he's changing everything by the spirit of the living God is changing everything by the spirit of the living God I'm hearing a name Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me Look at me. Shout Jesus. Jesus. My dear, look at me. Witchcraft. I'm stretched. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you. I stretch my hands and I declare. I'm seeing an altar catching fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it by the Spirit. I stretch my hands. That's what the Lord is saying I should do. I stretch my hands. It catches fire now. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Oh. Look at me. Where are you coming from? I'm from Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach is taken from my life. Is taken from my life forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. From, hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest with that. Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents? 
no, no, I, if, if I pray, most of you is not, it's not that word. You are just coming just because you want, it may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see, let me, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch, you see. This touch, just this touch, you see. There is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me is what makes this touch different. You see that? You can, you can have, it is not just a touch, maybe a touch for Jamboree. No, 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 no. You can, I can lay my hands on you, right? And then something can come upon you. I can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit. It's not just power. It's authority. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying now? So it is, it is a grace. It's a gift that God can give a man. He said, for I am a man under authority. I say to one, go. It's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching. I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you it's just that we are carnal we are carnal so we just feel that until you make contact with the man of god your life will not no 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 i don't have to give you a word of knowledge the anointing that you see this anointing through words through words i can speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service and we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak i told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the lord is saying i should tell you what happened to queen esther in the bible will happen to you i don't know who you are but the lord is saying i should tell you that what happened to adasa queen esther in the bible i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ so brothers and sisters i like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for i lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the lord is showing me something help is coming i'm seeing help is coming that's what the spirit of god is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when god says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming i'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of jesus christ the Lord is saying I should prophesy to someone it won't reach June it won't reach June this is what God is saying I don't even know what I'm saying listen God gave you a word God is saying you will not enter June without that miracle happening and in the name of Jesus Christ whoever that person is I release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a performance I'm seeing, I'm seeing a young man that came here 
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing mm -mm, i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentle man it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, say the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you. You see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing by the power of the holy spirit the lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing i stretch my hands now by the spirit in the name of jesus christ may that anointing be so lavish upon your life you will see strange testimonies as you agree with people they will note you they will note you for commanding results through prayer hallelujah let's pray for finances just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of jesus christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of jesus that grace i called him because the lord said i should minister to him that anointing is upon him i'm still praying there are people I'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit. This is, this is it, like a token of that grace, that call. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray now. Everywhere in this congregation and outside, if you are called into this ministry, I declare, You may not look like it, but I release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah then i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barring you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself please help them Madam, how long have you been married? 11 years. 11 years, no child. Madam, yes. how long? 7 years. 7 years. Yes. 18 years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam? 18 years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? 18 years. 18 years. Mm. You? Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been married too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, if someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's alright, I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child, you were even rejoicing, and you had a miscarriage. Yes. When? Last year. Last year. Yes. And from that time, this has affected you. Yes, I have to pray. There's something wrong with your stomach. Yes. The doctor already told you. I wouldn't say it in the open, but then this is what is killing the baby. Hold on, madam. Um, you had miscarriage, not even in tw in 2000 and. In 2014, child, uh, that's what I'm saying. You had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes. because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach. Yes. The baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach. Yes, sir. God is going to give you a child. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
my dear look at me this lady the mercy of god needs to speak for you you, you love jesus you love jesus i'll pray for you but you are not in need of child what you need is mercy the mercy of god many of us don't know what the mercy of god is the mercy of god is not for sinners the mercy of god is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you so when we say mercy it's not just because you have to be a sinner there are certain dimensions of god that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come i want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of jesus christ please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for i, I love men i respect husbands but many husbands don't love jesus they don't know jesus after their wives return like this and say my husband we just went for a program they don't have what program and they cancel out all of these things it takes two to agree are we together in the name of jesus christ madam put your hand in your stomach i take away this demonic thing let it go now in the name of jesus it disappears madam i pray for you the lord opens your womb in the name of jesus madam by the grace of god you carry your child in the name of jesus christ I remove every growth from your stomach in the name of Jesus I declare that you return with your miracle madam look at me God is going to use you Amen. you are not just going to give birth to a child the hand of God is on your life it doesn't look like it but there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God you will love God and serve him and with this miracle God is going to give you yes. every other woman you pray for yes, over sir. the issue of the fruit of the womb Amen, you will sir. see that God will open Amen. up your soul. in the name of Jesus Christ father you will arise and have mercy upon this my precious sister in the name of Jesus the voice of accusation that speaks against you I silence it by the mystery of the blood now go and have your child it's over in the name of Jesus Christ it's over my dear look at me go and prepare you have a child now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let the grace of God speak for you madam I pray for you help her please it's over right now carry your child in Jesus name please stretch your hands towards the altar and let's pray stretch your hands in one minute you for yourself madam okay in the name of Jesus Christ it's all right madam no problem in the name of Jesus Christ I pray um, you are trusting God for a child in the name of Jesus Christ somebody's sister is going to have twins hold on hold on hold on the power of God will come on that person now as I'm speaking for the sake of your sister carrying twins this is twins the lord himself hmm. there's one more person left i'm hearing the voice of children babies crying when it stops then i know that it's over i'm still hold on i'm still hearing it there is still one more person family i'm like i'm hearing the voice of children lord in the name of jesus wherever that family is i pray that you locate them right now by the spirit of the living god you locate them right now you locate them right now i'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of jesus 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 stretch your hands and let's pray Please begin to pray one minute and say, Father, whatever I have dropped here, just keep her there. I'll pray for her. That's all right. Begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony. In the name of Jesus, I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you. Impossible situations. Mabrakato Zadia Shanahasana Malakatosh. 
Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Please pray. Lord, turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let them say among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. We sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy. Lord, I bow my knees to you and I cry, visit your people. 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 Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there. And the amazing testimonies. This for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before God through your request and I decree and declare as I stand and step upon this request I declare rise above every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ the same way I'm stepping on this in the name of Jesus that is how you are stepping on every situation I turn every request in this place into your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of jesus christ every impossible situation represented here i cry to the god who is the god of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of jesus christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit let there be miracles in Jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ listen you see every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um, your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes i have seen the grace and the glory of god and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have walked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. In the name of Jesus Christ.
you have handled some level of finances before but i shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of jesus christ you have experienced favor before but i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare a new order of favor you have had god before but i program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of god i pray for everyone here inside and outside the mantle that causes men to be honorable may that grace come upon you may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ listen this ministry has never gone up and come down never not once it keeps going from glory to glory i declare let that be the definition of your life from today spiritually financially academically for those who are students i decree and declare the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you anyone here trusting god for a job a noble job i stretch my hands between now and next miracle service return with your testimony in the name of jesus christ and anyone here due for promotion i decree and declare by the finger of god step into a new dimension of promotion the fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen i pray for you in the name of jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you i found the calls of your prayer life i found the calls of your spiritual life i found the calls of your word life this is a prayer many people don't desire i pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger i say it again a baptism of spiritual hunger that the lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things every kind of arrival mentality every kind of spiritual complacency where there is no in there is no desire to press for the deeper things of god satisfied by the little results here and there i declare that the lord plants a fresh hunger the hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of jesus christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray i pray for you now in the name of jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food i curse it from your life in the name of jesus christ and finally i pray for you in this strange season where god is lifting men and changing their stories as I'm praying for you, I'm praying this one for myself too. In the name of Jesus, may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say, this one is the finger of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle if you will lead me to jesus 
I'm not too proud. I'm not a rebel. I can come to him genuinely. Please listen carefully. Overflow 3, overflow 2, 1, by the roadside, and those who are following online. The church is gradually becoming very, very unresponsive to the need for salvation. You are a man of God here. Take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously. If you are not saving souls as a church, you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a christian background a number of you love jesus christ but you are saying man of god i have never truly made a commitment for jesus i have i've seen people do all this but tonight i want to make that decision some of you are saying man of god i love jesus but i need a renewal in my life i just need a fresh touch i know that my life is not the way it used to be and I want to straighten out my ways with God. If you are here and you belong to these two categories, aside from overflow three, I'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen. Overflow one, overflow two, the roadside and inside here. I want you to come out right where I am here. Wherever you are, God bless you. Quickly, please. We have one minute for this. Wherever you are, Jesus is speaking to you. You must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight god bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles god bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and god make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them god bless you god bless you as you come quickly god bless you as you come you need jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process jesus said i am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out to make this declaration. I want you to know that this is a very noble declaration. Lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully. Say, Lord Jesus. If you're joining them, please come quickly. Join them. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you. Say it again. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the son of God. That you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight i receive you i receive your life i as i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life in the name of jesus i move forward ever and backward never the grace to stay the grace to grow the grace to be useful is mine tonight in jesus name lord jesus i stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you i pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the power of sin the power of satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i appreciate you i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him in concert there will be a group of people to just talk to you address you very quickly and then you will be back to your seat let's appreciate the lord for tonight hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap 
the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you